Well, hopefully they will. Uh, we would normally uh, ignore an event like a QAnon uh, conference. But when it's attended by a former national security adviser who calls for a military coup against the U.S., it is worth noting, while attending a conference of far-right Trump supporters in Dallas this weekend, an attendee asked former Trump national security adviser Michael Flynn, quote, why what happened in Myanmar can't happen here, to which Flynn responded, no reason, adding, quote, it should happen here. A reminder, the Myanmar military seized power in February and detained the country's democratically elected leaders over false allegations of fraud. So, uh, Max, um, oh. it, 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 this does bear repeating. I'm glad we're showing pictures of uh, General Flynn in the White House five years ago, four years ago, maybe just actually a little over four years ago. He was national security advisor. And um, and before that, a very respected career uh, in intel, military intel. Uh, and now he is calling uh, for a military coup in the United States. Uh, just a reminder, uh, again, that that we're we're hearing calls uh, like this. And uh, for those who think that things are settled because. Uh, Donald Trump is no longer president of the United States. Uh, they're whistling past the political graveyard. Uh, we still seem to be in the thick of this madness. No, absolutely. And, and obviously, uh, you know, General Flynn is not a mainstream figure, even within the Republican Party. But we ought to pay attention to what people like him are saying, because he is not entirely outside of what the Republican Party has become under Trump. I mean, sure, there's not a lot of people calling for a military coup right now, but about 20 percent of Republicans in a recent poll said they supported the actions of the mob that attacked Congress on January 6th, and about the same number uh, say that they endorse uh, the, you know, the patched crazy stuff that the QAnon conspiracy theorists are saying. I mean, this is where the Republican Party is headed, Joe. I mean, it's really becoming less the kind of party that we once joined and more like authoritarian parties in places like Poland or uh, Hungary or, or Turkey. I mean, this is deeply alarming. And you see before, you know, in plain sight right now, Republicans are essentially plotting to rig the outcome of the 2022, of the 2022 and 2024 elections. I mean, you see, I mean, you just had a segment earlier about the voter suppression legislation, which is advancing in Texas and advancing across the country. You see that the Republican elected officials who stood up for an honest count last year in places like Arizona and Georgia, they're being purged by the Republican Party or being having their power taken away. Uh, you're having redistricting going on. Uh, and basically, uh, the message that is going out to Republican members of Congress with the purge of Liz Cheney and uh, is you cannot resist the big lie. And, and my concern is what, what does that mean for 2024? Because, you know, what if there's a close election again? What if uh, Republicans once again refuse to acknowledge a Democratic victory. I, I suspect that even more uh, Republican members of Congress will be voting not to certify electoral college results. And already you had uh, a majority of the House Republican caucus voting in that way, including their entire current leadership. So, you know, this is an alarm bell ringing in the night, I think, for American democracy. This is, this is something Absolutely. that's really, really concerning. Yeah, Mr. Secretary, let's talk about uh, whether you are, are hearing those alarm bells for American democracy, is, democracy as well. We have Ann Applebaum on a good bit here. Uh, she's She wrote a great book last year, Twilight of Democracy, a cold warrior uh, throughout her life. Now she's warning about what's happening, for instance, in Hungary, uh, where Orban brags about his illiberal democracy, uh, where He's basically turned that country into a one-party state, and democratic institutions have uh, been chipped away at uh, for, for some time. Uh, how, how deep is your concern that that could happen here? Real concern, and I think everyone who has spoken here in the last 10 minutes has referenced it. You know, Gallup does a poll, um, have, done, have done this poll for the last 16 years. And they, they take the leading 15 institutions in this country and they uh, ask the question of the American people, 
how much trust and confidence do you have in each of these institutions? Now, these are the very institutions that keep a society together. Organized religion, organized education, journalism, Congress, politics, military. Only the military, only the military rates in the low 70s. Everyone else, except small business over 50, everyone else is in the 20s, 30s, teens. Congress is in single digits. What's that? What that means is that uh, our society is losing confidence and trust uh, in our institutions, in our governing institutions that, that really are the catalyst of our society. When that happens, then, of course, what's going to happen politically is going to be a reflection of that. We don't trust anybody. You can't trust anybody. Uh, and it breaks down further from that. Then you have people like Trump and those who support him who use this. And you use this to divide, to divide the country further and polarize the country further. So this is a real threat. And it's just and not internal. We know what the Russians are doing. We know what the Chinese are doing. But the real threat is internal. And uh, I, I think that is so important that we start to understand this. And only an independent commission with respected independent commissioners, not under the authority of the Congress or any political people, uh, can start to, to, to break through this and give the American people some honest answers, because the future, I think, is in jeopardy. I, I'm an optimist, and I, I've always been an optimist, but I'm a realist. And I see danger signs everywhere out there, certainly what the Texas legislature is doing, other legislatures. This is not good for our country. We better wake up. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, Eddie Gloud is with us and has a question for you. Eddie. Congresswoman Comstock, this uh, thank, it's great to see you. I want to ask a question, because in light of this five-alarm fire with regards to democracy, Senator Lankford, after not voting for the commission, tweeted that a lot of this stuff was happening in committees in the Senate already. Why can you explain to the American public why this cannot happen at the level of congressional committees or Senate committees or House committees, so that we can understand the scale and depth of the problem and why we need such a commission? Well, the report that's already being done in Congress is really about how do we harden the Capitol so some, an assault can't happen again, so you can't have like a terrorist attack on the Capitol building. So it's like you're looking at why do we have a fire in my house where the, where the building, you know, with the building not good. But you still have to look at the arsonist. And the criminal cases are looking at individual people and what they did. And that has to go through all the rules of the criminal process and, you know, get everything just right beyond a reasonable doubt. What a congressional investigation or what an independent counsel would do is look at the holistic picture of this threat to the American people. And I would like to point out, because often I forget to point out to people, Brian Sicknick and his, his partner, emphasize this to Republican members in frustration. She said, Brian was a Republican. He loved you guys. He voted for Donald Trump. So this isn't Republican versus Democrats. It's really the rule of law and backing the blue versus letting these insurrectionists and this whole culture that is going on continue. Uh, so also Officer Fanone. He was a Republican. And, you know, as those of you who have worked on Capitol Hill know, these, these Capitol Police, law enforcement in general, often lean, you know, center right. So they were there fighting to protect the members of Congress. And Officer Fanon said something very important to them. He said, I don't think a lot of you guys uh, appreciate how dangerous it was that day because we did our job so well. And they did. And it was ours. You know, we still don't know. And that's why there needs to be public testimony from people like Officer Fanon and Harry Dunn, who got all kinds of racial slurs you know, and, and, and attacks from people. And they were on the front lines and kept going out, even when they were injured, to fight this mob back from, that wanted to come in and hang Mike Pence, who, you know, we haven't heard from Mike Pence. When are we ever going to hear from Mike Pence? And all of the threats that were made against him from, you know, November on, asking him to, you know, go along with this insurrection. Fortunately, he said no, but what is all that back and forth? There are all kinds of documents at the White House, and Joe, you know, and all of you know, these subpoenas should have already gone out from Congress, because subpoenas themselves Correct. that bring in documents aren't partisan 
you know, you can still hand it over to an independent commission, but all this material is in the hands of these people who, you know, you know, whether, you know, Sidney Powell, uh, um, you know, all the people who were going in and telling the president about how they could do this insurrection, those records are there. All the texts that went to the White House on that day saying, do something, say something, get out in front of the cameras. We don't have that yet because none of the bodies looking at it yet are looking at that. And that's not a partisan agenda. That's telling the American people, we have to know the whole picture so this never happens again and getting everyone to understand the nature of this domestic terrorism threat that is now spread to our states. As was mentioned, we have these threats against Republican officials in Georgia and Arizona because they won't adopt the big lie. And when you keep lying to people for two months, telling them these things are true, what happened on that day could still happen again. And the threats, as the officers explained to the members, the threats against these members of Congress have gone up exponentially because of this big lie. Barbara Comstock, Barbara Comstock, Chuck Hagel, and Max Boot, thank you all very much.